Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church on this uh, third Sunday of Easter. We're still in the Easter season. Uh, as always, I have a few announcements. Um, just a couple things going on this week. This Tuesday at 6.30 at the church, um, we will have an outreach committee meeting. So we, um, as always, uh, we're looking for new committee members. So if you'd like to either be on the committee or at least um, see what we do, uh, please stop by uh, this Tuesday at 6.30. I know we're talking about um, possible yard sale again. Uh, I think highway cleanup, um, maybe Relay for Life. So there's different things that we're thinking about um, uh, and working on. So again, please, uh, if, if you can, please join us. Uh, as you know, I always like to plug the Bible study. That's this Thursday at 7 o'clock. Uh, we'll be in Romans chapter 8, and we'll probably start chapter 9. And uh, Romans 8 is a lot of fun. And um, the last several verses of that chapter are some of the most loved uh, verses in the Bible. So we'll be, um, we'll be discussing, discussing that chapter this Thursday. Um, I think the only other news I have um, is some, uh, like some prayer uh, concerns. Um, I have some sad news and some good news. If it's okay, I'll start with the sad news. Um, on, on Thursday, I believe it was, uh, John Najomo's father passed away. Uh, his father lives in Cameroon, and it, it was, I think, rather unexpected, right? Yeah, so we, uh, and then John might be flying back in a week or so. So we, please pray for his family. Um, I know you have several siblings, right? So there's lots of siblings and grandchildren. But, but yeah, please keep the family in your prayers for God's peace. Please pray for the family, too, as they travel. I, John's not the only one, I think, that lives out of the area. So there will be different people traveling. So please pray for safety. And again, just for God's comfort and peace at this time. Um, we, we give thanks for Samuel. His father's name was Samuel for his life uh, and for his faith. Um, we know that he's resting with God, but at the same time, uh, I know he will be greatly missed by his family and friends. So, again, please keep uh, uh, John's uh, family in your, John and his family in your prayers, the family of Samuel Nijomo. Um, some good news, but um, continue, please pray for healing. Paul Spangler had his surgery this past Monday. Uh, he came home Wednesday, and he's been doing well. In fact, on Friday, he even came in the church and printed and folded the bulletins for us. Uh, I don't think he was feeling up to coming today, but uh, he is, um, he's doing, doing well so far. So please keep, but please continue to pray um, for healing there. And since he, I'll, I'll mention Alan Koblenz is back since he had shoulder surgery, and he's got his arm in a, in a sling, so we continue to pray uh, for healing for him as well. I'm glad to see you back in church. Um, and then the last, um, I think the last bit of news I have, um, some really happy news. Uh, Jamie Thomas um, will be adopting her foster son this Wednesday. So this, yeah. So this Wednesday, um, um, I guess I'll say they make it official. I mean, he's been a part of the family now for quite a while, but um, this Wednesday uh, he will be adopted, and uh, so that, that's um, really exciting and, and good news. So um, I just wanted to bring that up to the congregation. Are there any other um, announcements for the good of the congregation? Anything I may have forgotten? Okay, well then we prepare our hearts for worship with the prelude. Thank mm -hmm. you.
I invite the congregation to please rise. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the, bapti for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsty earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murder given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, 
His name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsively Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness, gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine abound. Other youths I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me. The second lesson is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. But we do know is, what we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or know him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite the congregation to please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Please be seated, and I'd like to invite the children forward for the children's message. I have a seat up in front. Up 
There you go. I should stand. I'm still close. It's a little better. Okay. Well, good morning. Well, one topic that's really important to people I wanted to talk about today is our identity. Okay? Our identity. Do you know what this word means? Yes. Our overall self. Excellent. That's, that's, that's true. So, I, you know, I looked up this word. I found out there's several definitions, but that one's excellent. Our overall self. So our identity is the parts of ourselves that make us who we are, that make us unique. Okay? So that's excellent. Uh, so they may include, our identity includes like our beliefs. They often include like the work we do. Uh, the things that we uh, enjoy. So there's several things that go into our identity that make us uh, who we are, okay? Now, parts of our identity can change. So right now, uh, uh, so for everybody, a part of their identity is their age, but our age changes, right? So right now, all of you are children, right? So that's part of your identity. You're still, you're, you're not adults yet. You're still children. But again, that part, that part can change. Um, another part of your identity, which tr is true for all of you but one, is that you're all students, right? If someone asked you, what kind of work do you do, what would you say? You're a student. That's right. You're going to school. So that's part of your identity. Um, do you have any, any interests or hobbies? Anything you like to do? You like to play video games. I'm surprised my, what's that? Yeah, see, yeah, I'm surprised my sons didn't say that. Probably do all of you play video games? Yep, okay. I, think, I think all six of you do. Even my youngest does. Um, so video games, do any of you play any sports or in uh, I soccer? Soccer? Can be soccer. soccer? I used to play soccer? You used to play soccer? What, what were we doing this past week? You guys had meetings. Yeah. Scouts. So you're, you're in Cub Scouts. Um, are any of you musicians? Yeah, piano. Piano, that's yeah, so I, I knew some of you were musicians. So that's a part of your identity too, okay? So parts, several things make up our identity and who we are. <laughs> and some of them can change slightly. Um, so again, eventually when you're, you're eventually be an adult, you'll eventually have other jobs. Um, in some ways, we're always students, but again, that changes a little bit. But today, in our Bible lessons, we heard about the most important part of our identity. So one of the lessons that was read, we heard about the most, the single most important part of our identity. And here's what the Bible says. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Beloved, we are God's children now. So everyone who believes and follows Jesus, no matter how old they are, they are a child of God. Okay? So everyone who believes and follows Jesus, no matter how old they may be, they're a child of God. And what that means is that we belong to God and to God's family. So we all belong to God's family. So everyone in this room is a child of God. And as long as we keep believing in Jesus, we will always be a child of God forever. Forever. It never, ever, ever stops. We are always a child of God forever. So again, there's lots of things in our lives that make us who we are, all right, that are part of our identity. We talked about your age, your students. We talked about your musicians. You play sports. You're in scouts. You like video games. Um, so those are all good things. 
But the most important part of our identity is that we're what? A child of God. Good job. Okay, will you please pray with me? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, during the season of Easter, we are reminded that you came to earth, died on the cross, and rose again so that we could truly become children of God. We give you thanks for your never-failing love, which allows us to belong to your eternal family. Amen. Well, thank you for coming f- up, coming forward. All right, thank you. And let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Every day, there are a number of comic strips that I read. And one of them is called Zits. Does anybody else read Zits? Oh yeah, that's good, good, good. I I love Zits. Zitz is a comic strip that follows a high school student, an aspiring musician named Jeremy Duncan. Well, the theme, for this past, <clears throat> the theme for this past week's strip has been cramming for finals. And each day, there has been a different method that Jeremy has been using to try and cram all the information that he needs into his head for finals. For example, on Friday, Jeremy had his friend Pierce pile on textbooks on Jeremy's head, and the caption read, textbook osmosis. So the whole week was filled with, I would say, mostly unrealistic strategies for cramming for finals, but also strategies that I'm sure many students wish could actually work in real life. Now, I will admit that since the character is a high school student and not a college student, I thought this theme was a little premature. But either way, we are quickly approaching the end of another school year. Well, as you can probably guess, this comic strip reminded me of our scripture lessons for today. In our gospel lesson, we find Jesus appearing to the disciples after his resurrection. And Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. So Jesus is telling them that all of Scripture which for us today, what he's talking about is what we would call the Old Testament. Every time the New Testament is talking about Scripture, it's actually referring to the Old Testament. But Jesus is saying that the Old Testament, that all of Scripture points to his ministry, death, and resurrection. Now, St. Peter makes a similar point in our first lesson. In this reading, St. Peter is preaching to a group of Israelites after he uh, finished healing a man who was unable to walk. And he says to them, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of of Pilate. And then in verse 17 and 18, St. Peter says, And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. So in our gospel lesson, we find Jesus telling the disciples that his life and mission were foretold in Scripture. Then St. Peter tells a group of Israelites that Jesus' life and mission 
were foretold in Scripture. And as I was studying our lessons for today, and as I was reading the comic strip Zitz this week, I realized that, it's, that it is really a blessing that Jesus does not hand out finals like a high school. Because everyone in our reading for today would have failed. Everyone. The truth is that Jesus' ministry, death, and resurrection were foretold in the Old Testament, or as Jesus puts it, in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms. <clears throat> now, it is true that for human beings, the Scriptures are not always easy to understand. Like a high school final, they require us to study which I believe is by God's design. The Bible is a gift from God that helps us to know God and helps us to build a relationship with God. And reading the Bible is really a lifelong undertaking. So as I was kind of saying in the children's sermon, we never stop being students, not completely, because we're always called to study the scriptures. And God is seeking a relationship with us, and a relationship that lasts an eternity. On top of that, God wants us to use our own free will to choose to follow him. So God wants us to choose to follow him, to embrace his spirit, his love. Now, the, the good news is that the basics of Christianity are pretty easy to understand, which makes it possible for anyone to be a Christian, no matter, no matter what your age is or what kind of grades you received in school. So that's the, the, the really good, this is all good news, but that's the really good news. Anyone could be a Christian. The, the basics of Christianity are easy to understand. But we also need to remember that God is calling us into an intimate relationship with him. An intimate relationship with him. So God gives us his spirit to help us in our faith journey. But God requires us to put some time and effort into this relationship. And the more time we invest in studying the word of God, in prayer, in worship, and in service, the deeper our faith becomes. Our relationship with God will continue to grow. One of the reasons I so strongly believe in the teachings in the Bible and in the church is because God makes it easy for anyone to be a child of God, as our second lesson states. But by making the Bible so rich, with so many messages, and as we continue to devote our time and thoughts to God, the more we see that God is bigger than anything we can imagine. And yet this unending and perfect God actually wants us sinful human beings to be united with him for eternity. Well, again, the Old Testament points us to the ministry of Jesus. Jesus says in Luke chapter 24, this is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. What well, Jesus' suffering and death are foretold in the Scripture. I'm, yes, that's right. What Jesus' suffering and death are foretold in the Scriptures. And places like Psalm 22. Psalm 31, Psalm 69, and Psalm 118. Psalm 22 is always read during the Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday worship services. And this psalm begins with those famous words, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus' suffering and death are also foretold in Isaiah chapter 50 and 53. Isaiah 53 contains these well-known words. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our own inequities. 
Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. So that's a little bit on Jesus' suffering and death. So again, the Old Testament speaks about his suffering and death. Now, Jesus' resurrection is also foretold in the Old Testament. In Genesis chapter 22, we are told that Abraham's son Isaac was under a death sentence until the third day when God told Abraham not to lay a hand on his son. In the popular book Jonah, we are told that Jonah was inside a large fish and was not released until the third day. And the last example I'll give comes from Hosea, chapter 6, verse 2, where the prophet says this about Israel's restoration from exile. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live before him. So those are some of the examples of what Jesus and St. Peter are talking about in our lessons for today. Now, in defense of the disciples and of Israel, the scriptures are not always easy to understand, and they truly require a lot of studying. Well, Jesus knows that is true, and he's very kind to the disciples here in Luke chapter 24. And we are told that Jesus opened up their minds to understand the scriptures. Unlike a high school final, Jesus is willing to help us, even if we did not put enough hours of studying in. And he truly wants us to understand God's will. Jesus wanted his disciples, to understand his will. So again, he opened their mind to the scriptures. The message of the entire Bible is really summed up then in verses 46 and 47 in our gospel. Jesus said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Again, the Bible contains lots of important messages and lessons. I cannot begin to say how many vital messages are in the Bible. But at the heart of the Bible, at the heart of the Bible, is the message of God's forgiveness and reconciliation. And we see God's mercy on full display here. He gives this message to a group of men who, with the exception of St. John, abandon him on the cross. And he tells them that his message is not only for them, but for Israel, who has a long history of disobeying God. And then he doesn't stop there, but Jesus tells them that this message is actually for the whole world. Like a high school final, it's so important that we study because the more we study, the better we will understand that a God of mercy, a God of forgiveness, a God of reconciliation truly exists. In our first lesson, St. Peter really lays out the sin of the people of his day. He tells them that they rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to them. And then they killed the author of life. Now, St. Peter is speaking to the people of his day, but really the rest of humanity in every time and place is just as guilty. We often reject the holy and righteous one, and we turn inward and embrace our selfish desires. We reject the holy and righteous one every time we sin, every time we fail to love God and our neighbors with our hearts and souls. 
And yet the author of life continues to offer us life. Our first lesson ends with St. Peter proclaiming, Repent therefore and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. While we are on earth, God keeps calling us to embrace his love and forgiveness. And when we do that, we become children of God, as our second lesson states. Those of us who have already embraced the love of God are, as St. John says, God's children now. Well, I just love our second lesson. But like the rest of the Bible, it can be confusing. Verse 6 states, No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins, no one who sins has either seen him or known him. Now, St. John is not saying that Christians will completely stop sinning while they are on earth. But as Christians, we are to continue to study. We're to continue to practice and do our absolute best to keep our focus on God. If someone is doing whatever they want with absolutely no regard to God's will, then they are not a child of God. Instead, the children of God are people who remain in a relationship with God by studying His Word, by being in prayer and worship, and by trying to live out God's commandments. And we do this because we know a God of life, a God of mercy, and a God of reconciliation truly exists. Believe it or not, I occasionally have what I call nightmares of being back in school during finals week. I had one not too long ago. Normally, these nightmares take place when I was in seminary, when I did not have too many finals to complete, but instead papers. Lots and lots of papers. With God, we have a finals week in a sense. God wants us to embrace Jesus as our Lord and Savior before we leave this earth. We thankfully do not have written tests to pass, and I'm thankful we do not have papers to write. And we thankfully have a lot of help because God wants us. God wants us to pass and enter into his eternal kingdom. Our gospel lesson ends by Jesus telling the disciples to be witnesses to his good news. So we have the church. We have the church to help us. And it was those early Christians, those early disciples, who gave us then the New Testament. Now, there are other ways that God helps us to come to know him. But for today, I'll just stick to our scripture lessons, which teach us that we are given the children of God, the church, and we are given the scriptures to help us to know that a God of forgiveness, a God of reconciliation, and a God of life truly exists. And this God is calling all of us to be his children. Amen.
near you every hour of the day. When you're weak, when you're strong, when you're right, when you're wrong, in your joy and your pain, when you lose and when you gain, tenderly he watches over you. Every step, every mile of the I invite the congregation to please rise. With the whole church, we confess our faith using the words from the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O God. Creating God, like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Hear us, O God. God of all, the nations hunger and th thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of people. And this week, we especially pray for our nation as we continue to see more acts of gun violence and protests over policing. We ask that you would open the hearts of all of our citizens that they would be willing to listen to one another and work together to find solutions to all the challenges we face as a nation. Hear us, O oh God. Your Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion 
and nurse them back to health and wholeness. And Lord, we especially pray for all those who are known to this congregation that are in need of your healing presence. We pray for Elizabeth, Hilda, Susan, Geraldine, Irene, Mike, Nelson, Sandra, Paul, and for the family of Samuel Najomo, and all those we now name or aloud or in our, in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that we in this community of faith will become more and more like you in our mutual love and bold witness. Hear us, O God. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us. Assure us of the peace you have promised that we may join them in everlasting life. Hear us, O God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.